All right. Good morning. It's good to see you. And of course, it's Wednesday. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Winnie Lubamba and the show is My Doctor. And as we always say, it's a pleasure to have you on board. Now, today our focus will be on H. pylori. And I'm pretty sure you've heard people talk about this. Uh, but what we don't know is what exactly is... Um, H. pylori, how do you get it? How is it transmitted? What are some of the risk factors? Then don't worry, today we'll be focusing on the same. And from what research uh, says that it's primarily transmitted from person to person. And of course, it's found in about two thirds of the world's population. And of course, in areas with poor sanitation, H. pylori might be transmitted through contaminated food or water. So every time you're told to make sure that you, let's say, like wash your fruits and vegetables and make sure that your food is boiled um, well enough or cooked enough, then uh, make sure that you follow that because you do not know what you might get from a food that is not well cooked or if, uh, the, if the sanitation, of course, the area is not um, good in terms of hygiene. But all the same, we have a doctor. He is here to give us all the information we need to have on H. pylori. But then again, if you have any other question in relation to the team, then feel free to call us live or 791-478-990 is the number to call in. Of course, we're live, so that means you can call in live or uh, send a uh, send us a text that is if you call and the lines are busy then send us a text on 40975 telling us your name and where you're texting us from and of course go ahead with your question and we'll answer it as soon as we get it so for now let me introduce my guest for today good morning Good morning, Thank you very much for making time for us. Um, and of course, just joining us on My Doctor. So before we get into all the discussion about H. pylori, can you introduce yourself? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for having me here. All right. mm -hmm. My name is Dr. Pitanga Tiawarui. Okay. I'm a medical doctor mm -hmm. and I practice mm -hmm. here in Kenya. All right. Yeah. Okay. Now, before we even get to everything H. pylori, let's yeah. just start with the structure of the, the stomach. Yeah. Because most of us know we have a stomach, and most people confuse um, where exactly the stomach is. Some people think it's down here. Down here exactly. Yes, so so this whole area is the stomach. So yeah. where exactly is it located? And then let's talk with the structure. Okay, apparently mm -hmm. most people have these things wrong that this is the stomach. Yes. Apparently, people can differentiate between mm -hmm. the stomach and the abdomen. And the abdomen, yes. No, this is the abdomen. Okay, Actually, the lower... Uh, the, okay, the, the entire part. The entire part. Okay. No, it's the abdomen. All right. The stomach is in the abdomen. Apparently, mm -hmm. the stomach is just just below your heart. All right. No wonder people say that it is to a, to a man's heart is through it's his stomach. It's through the stomach. Yeah, oh, so, okay. Yeah, the stomach <laughs> is right there. Okay. Um, basically, the uh, stomach is a muscular structure mm -hmm. that uh, receives food and drinks once we ingest them. Okay and uh, mixes them up mm -hmm. and then uh, prepares them for digestion. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it has several layers, mm -hmm. both muscular muscle, the part that is the, 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 mus the muscle part and the mucoid part. Okay. It, ha it also has some cells that uh, secrete uh, things we call enzymes mm -hmm. that help to digest food. Okay. And uh, an acid that we're going to talk so much in this show today mm -hmm. called hydrochloric acid, okay. which now forms part and uh, parcel of what we're going to discuss today. All right, okay. All right. Now, H. pylori, um, how does it come about? And first of all, what exactly is it? Because we, we have heard the term, but yeah. don't really understand the depth towards this. Um, very simple, but not yet so simple, because in full it's like helicobacter yeah. pylori, what it means. Actually, H. pylori mm -hmm. is uh, the, it's an acronym. The full thing is Helicobacter pylori. Mm -hmm. Previously, it was called Campylobacter pylori. Ooh, okay. But now it was changed after more research was done on the bacteria. Mm -hmm. It's a bacteria that uh, once transmitted into a human host mm -hmm. or a human body mm -hmm. resides in the stomach. Okay. Uh, we call it a microaerophilic mm -hmm. bacteria, meaning that uh, it needs to stay in a medium mm -hmm. or in a place that has some oxygen, mm -hmm. not as much as in the atmospheric oxygen, but right. an oxygenated area. All right. And uh, it loves, uh, it likes residing in the, mm -hmm. in the stomach. In the stomach. Yes. Okay. So um, how or when, when does someone get the, the bacteria and where do we get it from? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the bacteria is transmitted mm -hmm. through contaminated water mm -hmm. 
or contaminated foods that okay. we eat. Mm -hmm. Research also shows that it, uh, it has been found even in saliva. Mm -hmm. So there are studies that show that it is also transmitted through oral to oral, mouth to mouth. Oh, okay. Because it has been found in the saliva and in the dental plaques. Okay, so it does it doesn't it not only not only um, this is the stomach, but also yeah, trans in the transmission part. Oh, the transmission, the transmission part. Okay, part got is, it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be transferred from mouth to mouth. All right or from contaminated food mm -hmm. and what, what we call fecal oral contamination. Okay. Yes. All right. Now let's address the contaminated food mm -hmm. or, and, and, or water, mm -hmm. um, first of all, because most of the time you'd find that people say, wait, but I, let's say, wash fruits and vegetables. I uh, make sure that probably I drink boiled water. Some people don't, and mm -hmm. that's fine. So in terms of contaminated food mm -hmm. and water, what exactly do we mean? Uh, by, uh, as I said, mm. uh, fecal oral means mm. um, this water mm -hmm. or this food is mm. contaminated mm. by a substance that uh, uh, has human waste in it. Yeah. So it could be either from the drinking water, either from the tap, or the, the vegetables we eat that are not cooked, mm -hmm. the salads and the, mm -hmm. and the stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically that's where we get it. Okay. But the... the the, the, the basic mm -hmm. or the major part of transmission is the fecal oral. Okay. Yes. All right. That's, that's the major part. That's okay. So part. when do we, when do we um, let's say, get the bacteria? Do we get it when we are young or even when we are older? Well, um, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, mm -hmm. we tend to get the, the bacteria from early ages. Oh, okay. From early ages. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to mention here that mm -hmm. Helicobacter pylori is not a single, it's a single bacteria but has a lot of strains. Mm. Or strains, I, I, I mean subgroups of it. Oh, okay. Not all of them are pathogenic. Mm. By pathogenic, I mean mm. not all of them will cause diseases. Okay. Uh, research shows that some of them are actually beneficial. Okay. Yes. All but right. uh, the pathogenic ones have uh -huh. been identified, well, this is more technical, the mm -hmm. genome. 29 to genome 34. Okay. Those are the ones that are very, very, very pathogenic, not mm -hmm. humans. Okay. Yes. All right. So when you get it, do you get like the entire package and then let's say it divides itself and then the good ones go to uh. where they're supposed to <laughs> and the bad ones cause diseases? Or what uh. exactly happens? Because like you said, we get it, especially, most especially in sub-Saharan Africa, we get it when we are younger. Yes. Mm. Uh, because of the sanitary conditions in, uh, in, in our settings, yeah. we tend to get this uh, infection way early when we are young. Okay. Both male and females mm -hmm. eh, in equal measure. Okay. Actually, more than half of the world's population mm. is infected by the H. pylori. Okay. But not all of them are pathogenic. Mm. So once they become pathogenic, mm -hmm. and by pathogenic now, I mean once they start causing signs and symptoms of a disease, mm. now that's when now you start getting those conditions that now mm -hmm. you seek medical attention. Okay. Yes. All right. So let's talk about what happens once the bacteria gets into your into your body or into your system? What happens from there? Once the bacteria gets into your system, mm -hmm. it goes directly to the stomach. Okay. Once in the stomach, uh, as I said, is a um, microaerophilic mm. flagellate. By flagellate, I mean it has something called, we call flagella. Flagella are like, uh, like legs. Let me just call them legs, but mm. they're, not, they're not legs. They're not legs. They, they are <laughs> okay. flagellas. Eh? Uh -huh. So once it gets to your abdominal, mm -hmm. uh, mucosa or lining, mm -hmm. it tends to burrow inside it. Mm. Now, once it burrows, mm -hmm. burrows is ku, kuji feature. Mm -hmm. You know, they try to hide in mm -hmm. the mucosa, okay. in the mucous membrane of the stomach, mm -hmm. so that the effect of hydrochloric acid that we produce to help in digestion mm -hmm. of proteins mm -hmm. does not digest it. Because as I said, it's mm -hmm. a bacteria yeah. and it's a protein. Mm -hmm. So once now it has burrowed itself mm. to escape the effects of hydrochloric acid, mm. that in itself, the burrowing itself, mm -hmm. causes now the body to react to, okay. to that uh, foreign object that has gotten into the body. Into the body, yeah. Now, the body reacts by producing some agents of healing or agents of trying to get rid of that mm. thing. Mm -hmm. Once it tries to do that, um, the the bacteria now will also react 
mm. trying to fight for survival yes. by producing some other uh, biochemical substances. Okay. We call them the urates, the mm -hmm. prolates. Mm -hmm. Now, once they produce those things, now uh, it exposes, it weakens the area that it has infested. Mm -hmm. And now the hydrochloric acid, mm -hmm. instead of being used to digest the food that you are taking, okay. and the, an another enzyme called pe pepsin, mm -hmm. which also helps to digest proteins. Okay. And I say, as I said earlier, mm -hmm. the stomach is a muscle, so it's yes. a protein as well. Mm -hmm. So now the body will start like ingesting itself. Now the hydrochloric mm -hmm. acid and the pepsin yes. will, will now try to like digest that part of the stomach. Okay. And by that it now calls what you call ulcers. Ulcers, yeah. Yes, so right. that's how ulcers come about. Okay. Yeah. And you see, we've, we've had so many people talk about they have ulcers. And, and um, sadly, you'd find that even young, young children, and by young I mean probably... 10, um, you know, to around 15 yeah. years, you know, have ulcers. And most people think that mm. ulcers, like this comes about um, due to stress. And you'd hear so many people ask this young child, so is that one of the myths that people think that when you have stress, it uh, causes ulcers? Actually, mm -hmm. it's more of a myth than a scientific oh, fact. Okay. Because... Um, mm. The development of ulcers is not something that just develops overnight. Mm. As I said, it's a whole process whereby uh, there's the infestation of the bacteria, mm. and then the body reacts to it, mm -hmm. and then there's all that reaction that takes place. Okay. People, uh, the signs and symptoms of, for example, gastritis mm -hmm. or peptic ulcers mm -hmm. can be mimicked by a lot of other conditions. Yeah. Indigestion, what you call dys dyspepsia, mm -hmm. worms, mm -hmm. So people, just because you have low upper abdominal pain does mm -hmm. not mean you necessarily have, have ulcers. ulcers. Okay. But everybody will say, yeah, I have, I have ulcers, ulcers, but not really okay. having the ulcers. All right. Now, so before we even get to uh, some of the other signs and uh, symptoms for the same, mm -hmm. um, so when the reaction happens where the, bo uh, the body, of course, tries to fight this and in the process um, mm -hmm. ingests um, mm -hmm. you know, this muscle, mm -hmm. um, is, does that... The, do the wounds develop at that at that point, or let's say that is the things that we do that probably um, accelerate the development of the wounds? Or what exactly happens after the body, after I mean during the reaction? What is the result from this? Thing? Now, um, as I said, once now the burrowing of the of the bacteria now mm -hmm. into the abdominal lining mm -hmm. happens. Yeah. And now the bacteria is producing those uh, biochemical substances I've talked about. Mm -hmm. eh? um, it's a process that will take time. Mm -hmm. It's not just a process that happens overnight. Okay. It's not a disease that you will, you will just get infested today and tomorrow you have the signs and yeah. symptoms. Yeah. No. Uh, there are other things that uh, will exacerbate or mm -hmm. will aggravate the. Mm -hmm. The, the condition to okay. happen, All right. especially people who take a long time without eating, mm. those people who fast a lot, or mm -hmm. those people who are not on proper diets. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you'll find that the longer you stay without eating, mm -hmm. again, because now the chemical reactions in the body don't stop just because you're not eating. Yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it, it exacerbates the... Mm -hmm. The, co the condition. Okay. Mm. And are there, let's say, foods that probably we eat that also, um, you know, aggravate the, the situation? Because for, for some people, you would um, hear them say that, um, I have ulcers. Mm. So let's say I can't take um, tea. I can't I take, can't take uh, beans. beans. I can't, I can't, can't take green veggies. Yes, green yes. veggies. So are there, like, is it, um, are there some of the foods that aggravate the same? Uh, now, uh, th there's a myth and a fact to this. Okay. Once you have that condition, mm -hmm. the gastritis itself, mm -hmm. there are certain foods, once you have that condition, that mm -hmm. are going to aggravate the signs and symptoms and of the disease. Oh, okay. Yes. All right, got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you hear somebody talking about, I can't eat this, it's mm -hmm. because probably they already have the condition. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Though. And and do we have like the different um, stages? Um, on the same in terms of probably it could be mild yeah. and another person could be severe and for the severe cases mm. um, what um, what let's say um, hastens uh, mm. you know that that process from it being mild to to severe 
Well, um, the aggravating factors and mm -hmm. the relieving factors, mm -hmm. actually that's what you're asking. Yeah. Huh? Um, once you get the infestation, mm -hmm. that's not the acute phase. Mm. Mostly you will have the mild signs and symptoms that can be of many other abdominal conditions. Mm. The bloating, mm -hmm. indigestion, lower abdominal pain, uh, no, sorry, upper abdominal pain. Yeah. Then you can have nausea on and off. Mm -hmm. Now, as the disease progresses, especially now the peptic, uh, the duodeno, okay, because there are two types of the mm -hmm. uh, ulcers that the H. pylori causes. Yeah. There's the duodeno mm -hmm. and there's the peptic. Yeah. The peptic basically happen in the stomach, mm, stomach region. Mm -hmm. The duodenal mm -hmm. just towards the exit of the stomach, the going stomach. to the to the duodenum. Okay. Um, so, uh, if now it's an at an advanced stage, like mm -hmm. let's say for peptic ulcers, mm -hmm. people will have vomiting, mm -hmm. and uh, they have something we call hematemesis, whereby they'll be vomiting blood. Oh, uh, blood. Okay. And uh, for those now who have du uh, duodenal ulcers, mm -hmm. because now they'll be bleeding, mm -hmm. but now the vomitors can't come out because it's past the stomach. Mm. They'll be having something called malena or bloody stool. Mm. Bloody in the sense that you just get dark, 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 dark stool. So okay. that is a sign that uh, mm -hmm. you have an advanced stage of either pep pe peptic uh, duodenal ulcers. Mm -hmm. And now it needs urgent medical intervention. Okay. Yes. All right. Now let's address some of the risk factors for the same. Um, we said we can anybody can get it as yes. long as probably they they are in an environment where um, you know there's there's that aspect of the the fecal mm. oral you know, contamination exactly yes. contamination. Mm. So, but who is more at risk of let's say getting um, the condition? Either let's say the peptic ulcer or the uh, duodenum ulcer. Um, well, uh, the incidence of uh, peptic ulcers mm. is more prevalent in mm. women than in men. Okay. So why is that the case? <sighs> it's not yet been established, okay. but uh, research shows that uh -huh. it's more prevalent in mm. women than men. Okay. And then uh, people who come from the now from, if you have a relative mm -hmm. who has had uh, either gastric ulcers mm. or peptic ulcers mm -hmm. or cancer of the mm -hmm. stomach or anything, mm -hmm. you are more susceptible to develop either. Okay. And again, if you get uh, early infection, mm -hmm. chances are you are going to get uh, more complications later. Oh. Okay. As compared to those who get uh, the infection earlier, l later in life, they okay. don't get to get to really complicated mm -hmm. stages of the, okay. of the same. All right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, before we even get to, to the ulcer, I mean the, the cancer part, mm -hmm. um, so the, the, the two different types, mm -hmm. are the signs and symptoms the same or they present differently? Uh, signs and symptoms mm -hmm. of the peptic and the yes. duodenal cancer, yeah. uh, duodenal ulcers. Ulcer, yeah. Yeah, they are, they are they are different, mm -hmm. uh, they are different, they are okay. different of, of, right. of course. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, as I had said earlier, peptic ulcers are basically in the muscle. In the muscle, in yes. The muscle, mm -hmm. In the stomach. Okay. So you'll get that, uh, apart from the general cardinal signs of abdominal pain, yes. nausea and mm -hmm. vomiting and abdominal discomfort, mm -hmm. you'll get that uh, these people who have peptic ulcers, mm -hmm. they tend to get more uh, exhibitions or more signs and symptoms mm -hmm. when they are hungry because oh. now the oh stomach right. is already empty yes. and now the pepsin I had said earlier mm -hmm. and the hydrochloric acid now is doesn't have anything to digest yes. so yeah. they tend to have those signs and symptoms mm -hmm. when they are hungry okay or early mornings okay now people who have uh, duodenal ulcers okay. as you said because it's toward the exit of the stomach into the duodenum then to the intestines mm -hmm. they tend to have the discomfort and the pain after meals Oh, oh because yes, now, because now, now the mm. meal are uh, there now. Mm -hmm. Once they try to go, to exit now, yeah. it causes more discomfort. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's the like ma major, main dif yeah. ma major difference. Okay. But, but all, all, all other signs are the more same. More or less the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the person with the duodenal ulcers mm -hmm. will have malena, as I said, mm -hmm. bloody stool that is stool that is totally black. black. Mm -hmm. And the person who has uh, peptic ulcers. Mm -hmm. we, mostly vomit blood mm -hmm. so again that's a, a differentiating mm -hmm. sign of the same okay although i must say mm -hmm. the two uh, the, the two symptoms i've said mm -hmm. the 
the vomiting of blood yes. and the and the bloody uh, the bloody stool which is totally black uh -huh. can also be a sign of other conditions okay. so not just somebody you just have a bloody stool and all of a sudden they say yeah, yeah, yes. i have green yeah. losses no 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 okay yeah, there could all be right. other conditions okay and it's important to just go get checked um to, it, to ascertain what yeah, exactly, exactly you have exactly. okay all right we need to take a very short break but of course when we come back we'll also talk about the the diagnosis part and is it possible for someone to have let's say the bacteria and not know it because like you said it doesn't uh, the signs and symptoms you don't notice it like it, it's not like a one uh, time thing where you get the bacteria and then you, you show the signs it takes time so of course is it possible for someone to be asymptomatic all right so we still have that and much more um, you know in regards to today's topic but just in case you have any other questions then feel free to call us live or 7914789990 is the number to call in live or alternatively is the line if the lines are busy then feel free to text us on 40975 and um Tell us your name and where you're texting us from. And of course, also go ahead and ask your question and we'll be sure to answer it as soon as we get it. So we'll see you on the other side of the break. Stay with us. Right, welcome back. Glad you're still with us. Uh, remember, today we are addressing uh, H. pylori. And of course, like we said, this is a bacteria that uh, causes two types of actually um, ulcers, and that is the peptic and the duodenal um, ulcer. Duodenal, right? Duodenal. Duodenal, duodenal ulcer. Okay. <laughs> um, and of course, we also talked about the different uh, difference in terms of where exactly they are. Um, but like we said, if you have any question, then feel free to call us live or 791-478990 is the number to call in. But just in case you call and the lines are busy, again, feel free to send us a text message on 40975. Uh, telling us where, I mean, your name, where you're texting us from. And of course, go ahead with your question and we'll be sure to answer it as soon as we get it. Now, before we went for a break, mm. um, we want to address the aspect of can someone have the bacteria and not know that they have it or not show it immediately? Probably, let's say they get it when they are young, mm. not show it until this later on um, in life when they are adults. Yeah, well... Uh, uh as I had said earlier, more mm -hmm. than fifty percent of the world population okay. is, is infected with H. pylori. All right. And I had said earlier that uh, not all strains of the same mm. are pathogenic or they cause diseases. All right. So, until you have the con the the ones that causes diseases, mm. there's nothing to worry about because, as I said, some mm -hmm. of them mm -hmm. are known to be beneficial. Yes. Especially to to children. Some have been known to help. Uh, with asthma, mm. uh, pre prevent the exhibitions of asthma, mm -hmm. another condition like allergic rhinitis. Mm. So some of them are known to be beneficial. beneficial. Okay. So until now you get the pathogenic one, mm. pathogenic ones, and until you you start presenting signs and symptoms of mm. the same, mm -hmm. now that's when you should. Uh, be concerned and seek medical attention. Yeah. All right. And just a quick clarification. Mm -hmm. Is it, let's say, once you um, are exposed to either contaminated foods or water, mm -hmm. um, let's say once, do mm -hmm. you get it? Or it, it takes, it's like over time, like constant uh, exposure to either foods or water mm -hmm. might let's accelerate your chances of getting um, H. pylori? Well, uh, there's no study that shows uh, a single incidence will cause the, mm -hmm. the same. All right. But... Uh, Again, uh, the presentation and the onset of, uh, of the condition, again, depends on the something called virulence. Mm. Virulence of the, of the, of the pathogen. Mm -hmm. By virulence, I mean how bad and how strong is it, uh, mm. and how much of it have you ingested at once mm. to cause the right. uh, signs and symptoms. Okay. Yes. All right. Now, let's talk about the diagnosis, because like we said before, we probably do not uh, self-diagnose as long as you have uh, let's say pains yeah. um, in your in your stomach. It doesn't mean that it's it's ulcer either of, of the two that we talked about. So diagnosis. Suppose someone either presents or um, thinks that they have some of the signs and symptoms, and then come to your facility. Talk yeah. about it. Um, what happens from there? Um, as I said, uh, these uh, signs and symptoms, mm -hmm. the abdominal pains, mm -hmm. the abdominal discomfort, the in, uh, uh, what we call dyspepsia, mm -hmm. in the, or, or indigestion, 
nausea, sometimes vomiting, can be also attributed to other conditions just mm. apart from the H. pylori infection. Okay. So uh, uh, the diagnosis basically depends on the presenting signs and symptoms mm. of the patient, number one. Okay. Uh, the examination that will be done, mm -hmm. the, the physical examination that we do to the patient, mm -hmm. so because there are those things that you you examine in a patient, and then now there's the lab, mm -hmm. the laboratory test that you do. Mm -hmm. You can either use blood, mm -hmm. you can use st as a stool sample, mm -hmm. and then uh, there's another um, urea ca carbon uh, urease carbon test, mm -hmm. what you call C13 and C14. Okay whereby you, you are given C13 or C14, mm -hmm. you ingest, and then they do a, a carbon monoxide test through your breath. Mm -hmm. Again, that's too advanced for some of us. So basically, a blood, a blood sample and a stool sample mm -hmm. should suffice. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we also recommend, once people have this condition and uh, you've treated them once or twice and the condition recurs, mm -hmm. we also recommend uh, something called, called gastroscopy, mm -hmm. whereby you do the examine the, inv the invasive procedure, yeah. whereby you also take a sample mm -hmm. for something called histopathology. Mm -hmm. Try to check now uh, how virulent is it, mm -hmm. uh, how is it cancerous or is it not cancerous? Okay. And no, All right. that one you do by doing gastroscopy. Okay. Yes. All right. Who seems like complex? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, you know, procedures well, for, for the same. Well, uh, as I said, you, you you start with the simple ones that oh, are yeah. that are non-invasive. Before okay. I go for gastroscopy, yeah, inserting tubes in your mouth, go mm -hmm. there to your stomach. Mm -hmm. I have to have checked stool sample, mm -hmm. blood sample. Mm -hmm and maybe the C13 and the C14. All right, okay, now we have, uh, before we get to, to the treatment uh, mm -hmm. part, fine, once someone has, I mean, the, the diagnosis is done and then they have ascertained that it could be either of the, of the two types of ulcers that we talked about, what happens from there in terms of the treatment options mm -hmm. and considerations for the same, but we have questions. Um, this one says, uh, can dry fasting or water fasting destroy the bacteria? Dry fasting or water, water fasting? Water fasting, yes. <laughs> well, uh, it's unlikely to to destroy the bacteria because, as I said, mm. the bacteria does not necessarily depend on the food you eat. Mm. Once it causes the inflammation, mm -hmm. once it has burrowed and it causes inflammation in the in the mucous membrane of the of the stomach All or right. the duodenum, okay. uh, the reaction that happens thereafter is what now will cause the ulcer. Mm. Once the ulcer is there, the reason you get signs and symptoms, the pains especially, mm. is because now the hydrochloric acid in your system mm -hmm. and the pepsin that should be digesting, proteins that you should be ingesting, mm -hmm. is now ingesting part of your body. Okay. So actually if you stay dry, dry fasting or, mm. or water, water fasting, fasting yes. actually you are, you are exacerbating the condition. Actually. Okay, yeah. all right, so, so what are they supposed to do? Um, make sure that, let's say, they eat, ensure well, they're not hungry. What you should do, okay. I think it's, uh, it's universal, uh, universally accepted that mm -hmm. uh, you shouldn't be doing fasting when you're sick. Mm. So I would suggest, first of all, get medical treatment okay. because this condition is curable. Yeah. It's curable once now you are totally cured, then you can go on with the water fasting and, uh, mm -hmm. and the dry fasting. Okay. Yes. All right. Now, another question. Uh, this one says, hi, my daughter Anapata Kiungulia, Akila, anything with Ngano? I think mm -hmm. the question is, um, can this cause um, ulcers? And if so, mm -hmm. should they avoid it? Well, as I said, Kiungulia, mm -hmm. I'm a heartburn. Heartburn, yes. It's just one of the many signs and symptoms mm -hmm. of H. pylori infection. Yeah? Okay. And I say, as I said, all those signs and symptoms could be also signs of other conditions. Mm. So I wouldn't suggest that you stop giving uh, your child Ngano. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I wouldn't categorically say that the Ngano is causing the ulcers or anything. Mm -hmm. I would suggest you, you, you get a further examination to ascertain what, because as I said, mm -hmm. there are many other conditions, conditions that could, just yeah. could cause the same. All right, okay, and then on the same, um, a question on, we talked about the pain, mm -hmm. all right? So. 
how exactly is it? Because there's some people who, you know, the way the usual, mm. um, probably you, you have like a stomach bag, you know, th that, that type of pain. Mm. And this other type where people say, Naskia kitu inanichuna kwa tumbo. All right, so which, which of the two, like, which, how do I know that this pain is not the kawaida, probably like stomach, I eat something and then it's not reacting well, you know, in my stomach and this other one, I mean, for either peptic or duodenum ulcer. Um, the pains mm -hmm. are quite uh, almost specific to these conditions. Okay. The pain is aching and burning at the same time. Ah, all right. Aching and burning. Mm -hmm. um, aching is the part where you feel out of discomfort. Burning is like you feel like totally there is mm -hmm. literally you are being You're burned. burned. Yeah. You're burning inside okay. there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. But again, mm -hmm. the pain could be also caused by a lot of other things okay. that uh, it would take us days to discuss in yeah. this forum. Okay. Yes. So it's important to just go get checked yeah. to ascertain. Yeah, to ascertain. Okay. But once the, or because it's hard to diagnose just a simple condition, uh, uh, one condition by mm -hmm. a single sign or symptom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It mm -hmm. means a combination of the same. Okay. So for such a... So for such condition, we just seek medical advice. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now let's talk about some of the treatment options and what some of the considerations before um, you give someone, let's say, a particular type of, let's say, treatment mm -hmm. um, option. What are some of the considerations for this thing? That that probably you know you give someone depending is is age probably one of the considerations and the type or what exactly do you consider? Uh, well. Uh, 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 this condition, uh, because so it's so rampant all over the world, mm -hmm. uh, it's treated by uh, what you call a triple therapy regimen. Okay. Triple therapy mm -hmm. means uh, it's three different types of drug, major ones. Eh? Mm. You give uh, a drug we call proton pump inhibitors. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the omeprazole, rabeprazole, mm -hmm. pantoprazole. Mm -hmm. Basically, those are the uh, they are the ones to wh which try to control the production of the, of the acid. Mm -hmm. Then you give um, two antibiotics. Mm -hmm. You can give a clalithromycin. Mm -hmm. And for those who are allergic to especially to those who are allergic to penicillin, mm -hmm. you give them clarithromycin. Those who are not allergic, you give them amoxicillin mm -hmm. and metronidazole. Okay. Those are the, the ones that will get rid of the... Of, of the acid. Or, no, of the whole of the infection. Oh, really? The, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Usually, it should be given basically two weeks. Mm -hmm. For two weeks, it's a drug regimen you give for two weeks. Now, for comfort, okay. because now, as you wait to heal, mm -hmm. there's those pains and those discomforts, mm -hmm. You're allowed to give uh, antacids, at mm -hmm. least to cool down. And, and then the, uh, the food that you are restricted to eat okay. when you are undergoing treatment or when you have the condition. The condition, okay. Yes. And, and, and let's talk about the foods, um, mm -hmm. to be specific, depending on the, the when you're under medication, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. So, or even when you're not on medication, mm -hmm. what are some of the foods that someone with, let's say, peptic ulcer mm -hmm. should have or should not, or should avoid? Yeah, actually, it's easy. Just to be clear, because... Yeah. <laughs> actually, it would be easier to say the ones they should avoid, because okay. if I try, if I go on the list of the ones they should eat, it's, there are so many. It's, there's so many. Okay, fine. Yeah. So let's go with the, with the ones that we should avoid. Basically, we say you avoid acidic foods. Okay. Uh, by acidic, f by acidic foods we mean foods that are rich in acid, especially citric acid. Mm -hmm. The unripe mangoes, the bitter mangoes, the the lemons, mm -hmm. um, the greens, especially greens alone. Oh. Now people will tell you uh, the benefits of having greens vis-a-vis -vis the yes. the conditions they are causing. Mm -hmm. All we say is. The greens, as they are, greens alone mm -hmm. could exacerbate the the acidity. Yeah? Okay. But if you mix them with anything, they become less uh, bitter. Mm -hmm. The better you can still use them. Okay. So, yeah, we also say people shouldn't take uh, these uh, synthetic juices. Mm. Uh, they shouldn't take spices mm -hmm. and uh, spices and. Uh, pepper, especially the hot pepper. Ooh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I must say there's this uh, 
fallacy or belief that once you get uh, an attack of the same, mm -hmm. you take milk. Yes. People take milk, mm -hmm. which is good, because it will relieve you for a few minutes. Okay. But uh, milk has a lot of proteins. And as we said, uh, pepsin <laughs> and hydrochloric acid, mm -hmm. Uh, specifically in the stomach, yes. waiting to digest the, the protein. The protein. Yes. So once you put in the milk, mm -hmm. now it will relieve because now the, the concentration will be now on the milk. Mm. So the body will react by producing a lot of acid and yeah. a lot of pepsin. Yeah. So once now the milk is already conjugated, mm -hmm. now the, uh, the pepsin and the hydrochloric acid now will turn to you. Yes. So people who take milk will get slight slight relief okay. and then we'll get a very, very bad, bad. Yeah. yeah okay so uh, should they avoid the for the milk but sorry yes um so should they avoid it when they feel the pain yes or they can yeah and and when they're not in pain they can now uh, again it's a time uh, again you consider the nutri the nutritional advantages of yes. this so you you avoid it when you have when the, you have the pain the pain okay now on the dietary management mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. Uh, there is, as I said, uh, I would suggest you avoid milk. Okay. But I would also suggest you use yogurt. Okay. Especially uh, the, what do you call this yogurt? The natural yogurt? The natural yogurt with mm -hmm. a lot of, um, there's this, um, I'll get the word right. Okay. Yeah, but right. the, there's a certain type of yogurt that we recommend we use because uh, it has uh, more bacteria that uh, will compete for the for the sites that the the H. pylori attacks. Mm. So it's also recommended you take that uh, natural yogurt. I'll okay. tell you uh, uh, the probiotic. Oh yes, probiotics. Probiotic. Okay. Yeah. All right. So don't just go for any Not just any, any other type of yeah. yogurt. Okay. Yeah. What about maziwa mala? Can they take that? Uh, no. 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 Okay. No, no, no. That's like a straight up no. Yeah, don't. That's okay. a no. It will exacerbate the condition. Okay. Yes. Or, and especially for pepper. I know my friend mm. has, I think, peptic ulcer. Mm. She takes a lot of pepper and, okay, I think she, she reduced, but I know she's watching. So pepper is like a no. Yeah. Well, no, no. if you have the condition, it yeah. will only, it, it, well, the food will taste good, but now the repercussions will be so bad because now the infl it, it will trigger more inflammation of the Okay. Of the condition. All right. Yes. Okay. And for the people with the um, duo duodenum mm. ulcer. Duodenal ulcer. Yes, duodenal ulcer. Mm. Can they also avoid the same types of food? Because for them, we said they experience the the the, the pain yeah. after. After the yeah, age, yes. after. So can should they also avoid the yes, foods yes. that we talked about? Yes. Yes. yes completely yes, yes. avoid. Yeah, okay. Now for the treatment part, mm. is there a cure? Because I know of some people who have had ulcers for a very long time. Mm. Um, they're taking their medication, mm -hmm. um, especially when they when there's that aspect of pain and you know all that. They take their medication, mm. but still, mm. they have the condition. They have the condition. Yes. Well, um, as I said, uh, we use uh, a proton pump inhibitor mm -hmm. or H2 H H2 receptor antagonist. Uh, okay, those are the drugs, the omeprazole, the mm -hmm. abeprazole, mm -hmm. then we use the amoxicillin, and those who uh, are resistant to amoxicillin, mm -hmm. we use uh, clarithromycin, a drug called clarithromycin, okay. and metronidazole. Mm -hmm. Now, due to our exposure, uh, back in the day, people, have, people tended to develop antibiotic resistance. Mm -hmm especially to a drug that is so commonly abused in Kenya, mm -hmm. the amoxicillin, because mm -hmm. anybody who is sick, who, who has a run anything, they just go and, and, and yeah. prescription, uh, they just go and ask for amoxicillin. amoxicillin. So people yeah. tend to develop uh, resistance, resistance to the same. To the okay. same. Mm -hmm. So you find that uh, that drug basically mm -hmm. refuses to work. But now there are other options that are used uh, once it has, been, it has been established that mm -hmm. you are resistant mm -hmm. to, the, to the same. Okay. And um, if you are treated for, because I, I said the, the stool sample and the blood sample that mm -hmm. we take to check for H. pylori mm -hmm. will diagnose H. pylori. Okay. But the best one is endoscopy. Okay. Not everybody will, uh, will afford an endoscopy. Yeah. So my advice would be, and I've seen this in my practice for mm -hmm. so many years, mm -hmm. if you are treated for 
H. pylori more than three times mm -hmm. and it recurs, mm -hmm. then you, know, you don't have it. Okay. You have another condition. You, you need further investigation. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Okay. So don't yes. don't keep don't, on uh, the medication. Don't keep uh, repeating the triple therapy now. You mm -hmm. repeat the triple th the therapy after a month. Another mm -hmm. triple therapy for a whole year. Mm -hmm. I've seen. I saw somebody who believed so much they had peptin. They had H pylori because mm -hmm. every test would show that it was positive. Okay. And all along he had a condition with the liver. Wow. Because, uh, okay. as I said, these conditions, uh, these signs and symptoms mimic yeah. each other. Each other, yeah. Because uh, an examination or a test, uh, other test will rule out a disease. And mm -hmm. as we say in medicine, mm -hmm. diseases don't read books. Mm -hmm. So the disease will present with different signs and symptoms uh, that might not point to, this, mm -hmm. to, the, mm -hmm. to the diagnosis you are thinking. Mm -hmm. And people tend to do something that's so wrong you have an abdominal pain, the first thing you do is you go Google. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you Google abdominal and pain. <laughs> and then... <laughs> the self the, 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 yeah. Actually, the results you are seeing, you, you only want to attach yourself to the ones you think are not so bad. Okay. So even people will come to you with a mindset that me, after Googling, mm -hmm. I think I have peptic ulcers. Okay. It, it's not. It, it's not. Yeah, All so right. So it, don't. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just go to a hospital and get checked. That's get it. Get checked. Okay. As we finish, um, let's talk about the prevention um, part very, very briefly. I know we do not have time, but yeah, yeah. as your parting shot, what should people okay. do to prevent um, H. pylori? To prevent H. pylori, as I said, uh, uh, it comes through contamination mm -hmm. of the things we put in our mouth. Okay. It could be water. It could be foods. Mm -hmm. And um, the best way is to just keep the try. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, sometimes it's, it's hard because you're not always in the house. Try mm -hmm. to keep the highest standards of, of hygiene. hygiene yeah. and, then, and once you have those signs and symptoms, mm -hmm. instead of just rushing to buy drugs, go get tested, mm -hmm. get proper testing, because this condition is totally curable. curable. It doesn't okay. have to get into complications because okay. it, it has its own complications. All right. All okay. Right. So what you think is, is curable? It's curable. Okay. All right. So, and from what you said, once you're treated like twice or thrice, then, and, and it's, it's not responding to the medication, then it could be something else. It could be something okay. else. Okay. All right. So we have to end it here. Thank you very much for staying with us. Thank you very much for your questions. I believe you have been answered to your satisfaction. My name is Winnie Lubem, and of course, on behalf of the entire team, who may they show a success, we wish you a lovely day ahead. We'll see you again next week on Monday for the the same that is more on my doctor but just in case you missed the first part of the discussion do not worry you can get the full episode on youtube that is on our page that is ebro tv or alternatively you can catch the repeat at 11 p.m see you uh next week on monday goodbye for now